course expressing my, my honor and my great joy uh, for being here in this, uh, uh, this anniversary, this, uh, uh, this beautiful moment when uh, uh, a graduate program in, in history of science of PUC uh, São Paulo reaches its 20th uh, year of life a very uh, uh, eventful, very productive life, of which I'm, I'm happy to have been taking some part of, uh, of having some, some, uh, uh, the opportunity to have some role in it for the last 10 years at least. And uh, for me, it's always uh, uh, something to remember that my first invitation to take part in, in, a, in a PhD examination was by this program. Uh, Professor Barça Ferraz was telling about, I think, around 320 uh, dissertations, masters and PhD dissertations, and I'm really happy to, to have had the opportunity to read at least, I don't know, 30 or 40 of them, and uh, it's always a pleasure to be here and to be uh, once again with all of you. Uh, okay, so, Julie, uh, this is a sign. Okay, uh, so, uh, the most important for me was this, was to congratulate my dear colleagues and friends uh, at CESIMA, at the Pontifical Catholic University, and specific, specifically today in their roles as uh, 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 researchers and, and professors and students at the Graduate Studies Program in the History of Science for this very important and, and beautiful uh, uh, moment in, in the institutional life of the program and in, in the life of uh, the history of science in Brazil. Well, uh, now I have to start talking because uh, uh, my time probably is running. And uh, what I prepared to, to speak about today was uh, a number of comet observations performed in the Americas in the second half of the 17th century. Uh, when I started to, to did this a few months ago, so this means this is really work in progress, uh, I didn't expect to find as many reports, published reports, most of them both printed and published in the Americas in the second half of the 17th century, as I have found. Uh, presently, I have, uh, I have already listed around 30 observation uh, reports of comets. Uh, all of them were performed and published in less than 40 years, and well, this, uh, yeah, it's this one, you see. Hello. 
vaults, libraries, archives, and all sorts of uh, 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 things like this. Uh, mostly, they were locally printed. This is something I, I think is also important to, to stress. Uh, where was were this, uh, this comet observations performed and the reports printed? Mainly in Mexico, Lima, Boston and Salvador, here in, in Brazil. Uh, it's very important to stress that some of these reports that were originally published, uh, well, in Mexico, Lima and Boston, in, in Salvador, no one of them were uh, printed, but the observations were made there and, and uh, the texts were written there and then sent to Europe to be printed. But many of them, or some of them, were later uh, reprinted in Madrid, Seville, and, and London. Uh, and in at least one case, this generated a new printing back in the Americas, uh, in a kind of dialogue. Uh, who made these observations and, and wrote these reports? Well, I have a few Jesuits. Uh, this is to be expected in, in colonial Americas, at least in, in Mexico and, and Brazil, and also in Peru. Uh, I have a, at least one Puritan preacher, uh, some university men, some cosmographers, so several important social roles in, in colonial societies all over America. All of them are represented here in this, let's say, this sample of people who were interested in comics in the second half of the 17th century uh, all over the continent. Uh, what is written in this report, or what has been observed and what has been uh, in a later moment, uh, uh, conceptualized uh, 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 starting from these observations. Well, we have, it's very usual to have astrological limits, uh, but also we have a few essays on, on orbit determination. I will, in, in a few minutes, I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more specifically about each one of these points, what they mean. Uh, and I would say that uh, maybe the most important thing this comet observations uh, ensued was uh, a very deep discussion all over the Americas on the limits of Aristotelianism. Uh, a kind of probe into the limits of Aristotelianism <laughs> took place in the second half of the 17th century in the Americas from uh, comet observations. And this is uh, something quite important in view of the history of science in this period uh, in Europe. And uh, in a way, I want to, to sustain that the Americas were uh, on a complete par with important, famous discussions on the limits of Aristotelianism uh, that were taking part elsewhere. Well, uh, just a few things about comets and about uh, uh, the kind of discussions that uh, uh, comets uh, uh, promoted. Uh, first of all, there is the question of what comets are. This is a, a quite important question since the late 15th century and in the second half of the 17th century, this is not totally uh, settled yet. Uh, people still have some lingering uh, uh, doubts or maybe some lingering uh, uh, certainties that comets should be considered things that happen in, in the higher atmosphere uh, or in the elemental region surrounding our planet. So this is something from a much earlier date, but well, it represents 
just the, the, the main point here, the Earth is uh, at the center and it's surrounded by, well, there is Earth proper and then there is water, uh, air and fire and the comets would be things that happen in this fiery region. Uh, this <coughs> Also, from a much earlier date than what I'm, uh, uh, than the one I'm, I'm concentrating here, but it also captures something important: comets as atmospheric uh, phenomena. Uh, there are several kinds of comets: comets with long tails, comets with uh, kind of heavy things uh, and, uh, around them. Comets going up, comets going down, or uh, from one side to the other. And all of this visual signs, they mean something. Uh, if you have a long tail pointing east or pointing west, this, well, it's not that they mean, they may mean something. So the form of the tail, the, the direction it points to, it may mean something bad is going to happen or something good is going to happen. Uh, the, for how long this comet is visible, this also may mean something. And well, this is a very, very ancient tradition. I have no, no time and no, no skills to delve deep into this. But uh, in the 15th century, it's been quite codified and in the 17th century it's pretty much alive this tradition of interpreting the visual characteristics of comets uh, in order to relate them to earthly affairs, political affairs, to uh, wars, to diplomatic affairs, to crops and uh, blades and all sorts of things like this. This let's say in the height of the so-called scientific revolution, this is still a very important business for astronomers, astrologer, astrologers, and uh, almanac writers, and all sorts of people. Uh, as in Europe, in America. This is important here, from uh, New England to Salvador. People are paying attention to comets in order to try and extract from them some kind of uh, uh, omen or some kind of guide to uh, daily and political affairs. Uh, well, at the same time, there is also something important happening from the uh, from the second quarter of the, the 16th century, and it goes on until at least, at least uh, the publishing of Newton's Wikipedia in the, the very late uh, 17th century, which is uh, trying to determine the orbits of comets from observation, observational data. Uh, so this is also from, well, this book I have been quoting or uh, showing illustrations from it uh, before. Uh, it's also Petros Akianos, uh, a, a very important cosmography handbook. Uh, I have to take care with this uh, 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 names, but anyway, what is shown here is Akianos making a series of uh, uh, measurements of the comet in different positions. This is uh, uh, there are several time frames collect in the same picture here. This must be done over uh, a few days. But from this systematic uh, collection of observational data of uh, cometary positions in relation to the so-called fixed stars, it's possible using something called the parallax method. I, I won't go into details now. Uh, to try and determine the orbit of the comet and, well, at least the distance of the comet from the center of the Earth. And, uh, well, this starts to bring some problems in the late 16th century, especially after 
the observation of this so-called great comet of 1577. Uh, it's a, a really important comet in, in the history of science. This is the comet that uh, Tycho Brahe uh, observed with, with great care. Uh, this is a beautiful woodcut uh, from Prague. And what's he written here is the marvelous and terrifying comet that was observed a few days after St. Martin's Tuesday or something like this. Uh, what interests me here is this kind of thing. The, those are sketches made by Tycho Brahe of this comet. And he, well, this is, this is almost folklore. He had a, a, a large observational enterprise. Tycho Brahe ran something like this. Uh, and he was able, using data from this comet, uh, applying this parallax method, of which I, I, I said something a few minutes ago, he was able to determine in a very convincing way that uh, this comet couldn't be considered a phenomenon from, from the fire region of the atmosphere. It should be considered something uh, uh, in the heavens. Uh, well, there is a lot of astrological import to this, whether the comet is in the atmosphere or whether it's in the celestial region, because the influence uh, uh, somebody may have on human affairs, uh, be them political or health or whatever, uh, it may be quite different uh, if this is an object uh, that belongs to our fire region or an object that belongs to the <coughs> celestial realm. So this is also a starting point for a lot of astrological uh, uh, worry during the 17th century. Uh, well, there is also something very important going on with this comet of uh, 1577 and it is Tycho Brahe's uh, uh, starting point for the development of a, a very important system of the world, a very important cosmological model, which is called the Tychonic model, and for some reason it's much less uh, well known than the old uh, Ptolemaic one and the so-called New Copernican one. Uh, Tycho Brahe's model had the Earth as the center of the universe and the sun orbiting around the earth, but all the other objects, or almost all of them, orbiting the sun. And this is what's represented here. And in his sketch, it was also there. The center C is the earth, and the sun is the upper center. And the comet is represented here in a few positions. The comet is this. Uh, uh, the circle with something that uh, you can recognize as a kind of tail. Uh, well, I'm not here to talk about Tycho Brahe, I'm here to talk about a few of our American uh, colleagues. Uh, the first one is Francisco Ruiz Lozano, uh, the Cosmografo Mayor, or a major cosmographer of the Vice Royalty of Peru. He was also uh, uh, the chair of mathematics at uh, the University of, of Peru and the University of San Marcos. And uh, well, he, he published a very, very understudied uh, uh, treatise on comets. In fact, he published two important documents on comets uh, in Lima. They were published there in the 1650s and 1660s. One of them a, a, a treatise on, on comets, specifically on comets, and the other one uh, a collection of astronomical observations, including observations of comets. Just as, uh, as an aside, let me tell you that the 17th century in general, and, and the second half of it, uh, well, it's been a, a very nice time for comet 
observers, comet hunters, or whatever, because several comets, year after year, they were spotted all over the, the world. They were quite bright comets. They were visible for a few months. Uh, the first of them were, were seen in the early part of the century, in 1618, uh, and they gave uh, 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 place to a very famous polemic between Galileo and, and the Jesuits and Galileo was defending that the comet was just a, 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 an atmospheric phenomenon and the Jesuits were saying no, this is something from the celestial realm, they were using uh, the parallax method and they were also taking advantage from the fact that, well, to, to use this parallax method properly, it's better if you have a lot of people observing the same phenomenon from very distant places. And the Jesuits had the disadvantage over Galileo. They had people in China, in the Americas, in Japan, and all over Europe. And they could compare observations, and uh, this heightens the, let's say, the, the uh, trustworthiness of the results and they were quite convinced this were a uh, uh, celestial phenomenon. Well, this man, this he, he has nothing to do with uh, uh, the Jesuits, but uh, well, he was trained as a mathematician uh, uh, in Lima, so he's, let's say, uh, uh, He's a, a, a real local person, uh, and he he also employed this kind of method. He he had access to telescopes and to a few other important instruments for astronomical observation. Uh, he also took advantage of his position as a, 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 a royal cosmographer. He had this office. He was appointed to this. He had a, a, a pension to to do observations, and more than that, to produce things that would be uh, used by the Spanish crown to assert its power, uh, or in a way, to, to make it known to all their rivals uh, in Europe. So, publishing a cosmography book, or specifically an, a, a, a treatise on comets in Lima, in the second half of the 17th century, it has also a great political uh, import in, in this context where this man uh, lives his life and, and, and uh, performs his, his studies. And it's very interesting that uh, Lozano tries to, to keep a distance from all kinds of astrological uh, uh, questions. He tries just to give tables of numbers and uh, the brightness of the comet today and tomorrow and along several days and he tries to determine its orbit using parallax methods uh, he's convinced it's a celestial phenomenon but he really tries not to, to uh, take part in this still a heated uh, uh, discussion about astrology. Um, I'm really fearing my, my time runs out very, very fast because I, I talk too much. Uh, let me move to, to the other corner of the continent, uh, to Boston. Cotton Mather, a man uh, some of you may have already uh, met before. He was a very influential figure in that uh, terrible event of the, the uh, Salem witch trials. He won, was one of the main prosecutors. Um, he was also the son of Harvard University's first president, uh, in Greece Mather, and a man from, from the Puritan New England elite in the second half of the 17th century, uh, a preacher by, by profession, and he also wrote a couple of, well, he wrote a couple of sermons on, on comets, comets that were being seen, not 
uh, sermons on comets in general, and he also wrote a, uh, I can't say a treatise, but a pamphlet on comets, and it's very interesting because he takes, uh, uh, well, of course, he takes a, a, a very strong position against anything he calls superstitions about <laughs> comets, but also he recognizes that God, uh, in his infinite, uh, 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 well, in his omnipotency, God can use comets to send signals to people, and uh, the comet from 1682, which is the one he, he dedicates most uh, of his attention to, is one of the signals of, you know, a society full of vices and full of uh, uh, terrible ways, and this comet is an opportunity God has given these people from England and New England to mend their ways and try and be something better. But then he also includes a lot of numbers and observations and things like this, so he has a kind of mixed discourse <coughs> between what was to become mainstream astronomical discourse and uh, astrology or even what he himself calls superstition uh, it's there in, in his uh, uh, preachings and in his pamphlet this was printed in Boston and later in London and then it gave uh, uh, well the London edition he was not happy with this a lot of people in this moment were not happy with what was made of their uh, uh, writings, so he printed in Boston a reply to the London edition that uh, carried his name, but distorted in his view a few of his uh, 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 positions and uh, uh, opinions on, on comments. Well, this is probably the most famous, and this is quite well known, uh, the most famous of the, the cometary observations in, in late 17th century America. This is what uh, uh, involved a couple of important Mexican uh, uh, men of letters or of science. Uh, one of them is uh, Carlos de Siguente Góngora, the famous uh, chair at the, 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 the Royal and Pontifical University in Mexico, and in the other side, the Jesuit uh, uh, José Francisco Quino, who's very well known as a, a cartographer of Baja California and uh, is also well known for his theories on California being California as a whole, not only Baja California being an island or being connect connected to to the American continent. Uh, well, we have here, again, different kinds of discourse being uh, uh, poised one against each other and also inside each one of these books and they are not the, the whole exchange between these men. Uh, Siguente Góngora considers the comments of 1678 and 1682 as, uh, let's say, natural phenomena, and Eusebio Kino concedes that they are natural phenomena, but God may be behind them, and God has something to, to tell us at that precise moment when those comets were spotted, and what God has to tell us or to tell them in Mexico in that moment is also what Cotton Mather was uh, uh, seeing or feeling in, in New England. It was, you are going in a bad direction, you are being bad people, you are a bad society, uh, and maybe this is uh, the fault of the Spanish, and maybe you should consider, you should have, you know, uh, a kingdom of your own. And things like this are, uh, uh, 
are here in, in these books. Siguente y Gongora, uh, a lot of people consider him a kind of model of uh, the Creole uh, intellectual, and also, of course, he has a take as well in this question of Spain versus or with uh, new Spanish society. And, well, this is certainly the most uh, 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 long and the most rich of this planets or uh, this situations of comets uh, in America. We finally have uh, this, Salvador Bahia. Uh, to, my, to my right, we have this beautiful frontispiece of a uh, uh, a book by a Jesuit priest, Valentin Stancel. This is, is quite well known. Uh, well, it has been made well known by one Brazilian scholar from, from Rio de Janeiro, where some of you were last week, Carlos Zima. He has studied in depth this, but he didn't compare this to the other. Uh, uh, the other colonial American situations. Valentin Stancel published his book, it's a long book on astronomy, he published it in, in Europe, in Bohemia. Uh, the frontispiece is very nice because what's uh, uh, the background is the Jesuit college in, in Salvador and he has a lot to say about a couple of specific comments, second half of the 17th century it's, it has become uh, quite famous and, and uh, a reason of, I don't know, of, of some people being proud that these comets which were spotted in Salvador, uh, the observations were communicated by Stancel not only in this book but also uh, through letters to Athanasius Kircher, the, the famous Jesuit in Rome, uh, which made them appear in the Giornali de Literati of Italy and then they appeared in, in England and finally in Newton's Spring Media. So ah, this is the Brazilian uh, contribution to Newton's Spring Media. I, I'm, I'm not very fond of this kind of uh, trying to, to find a place like this. Uh, well, and here to, to my left we have a famous Jesuit he was not an astronomer in many sense, or a cartographer, or anything like this. Antonio Vieira, uh, but he was probably the most important political figure of uh, uh, 17th century Bahia. Uh, he was a, a, a very close uh, uh, counselor to King John IV of Portugal, who seceded with Spain. So again, we have this question of uh, separating power, separating things, and they were engaged in, in some polemics about how to interpret comets, both of them are willing to accept comets are uh, uh, God-given signs for, uh, for us to decide on our future, especially on our political <coughs> future, and just to, to close uh, this is in fact what I, I am starting to try to understand now and I, I mentioned it in my first slide uh, Aristotelianism is always at play in these mm -hmm. writings but not Aristotelianism uh, not the Aristotelianism related specifically to comets to their being uh, an atmospheric versus a celestial phenomenon, but political Aristotelianism. This is what's at stake here, and the comets are a way to access what in the second half of the 17th century is becoming clear to people all over the Americas, maybe more in the Americas than in Europe, that political Aristotelianism, well, not, not just of course, we have to remember Hobbes, but uh, okay. Political Aristotelianism seems not to give any solution to the problems of uh, organizing empires or 
imperial society 